What if you have one bad month? What if you make no money first month? What if you make like a little bit of money month two? What if month three doesn't go that well either? Month four, month five, month six? How many months before you are literally gonna be in a bad, bad, bad situation? Like not able to pay for your house, not able to pay for food type of situation. This is The Fighting Entrepreneur, the podcast dedicated to entrepreneurs looking to change the world. Learn how to start, build, and scale a business in today's highly competitive business environment. Here's your host, The Fighting Entrepreneur, Anik Singhal. Should you just get up one day and say, you know what, the heck with this, I'm out. All right, so let's talk about this. Number one, all right, do you even have a skill? What is your skill? If you wanna go out and become an entrepreneur, there has to be at least one thing that you are better than 99% of people at, or at least 95% of people at. This is why I built Learn. Listen, go to learn.com, L-U-R-N.com. Sign up for a free account. We have 100 plus courses, some that are free, some that are like five bucks, and you know what? Figure out what is the skill you wanna really dominate at. For me, it's, it's copywriting. For you, it might be advertising, it might be social media, it might be free content, but what, what skill are you gonna build a business around? Do you know how many people quit their jobs and just, they literally run out the door because they're like, yeah, hey, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, I'm gonna be financial free, and then they hit the parking lot, they're like, what am I gonna do? And that is exactly how you find yourself in major trouble. So really, the answer to that first question is, should you just quit your job? No, all right? Number one, you gotta have that skill solidified. You gotta know what it is. So what is your skill? At least, maybe it's not your number one skill right now, but what do you want to be your skill? Leave me a comment in the comments right now. Go ahead, do that. While you're doing it, by the way, hit subscribe, okay? So that you get all the amazing videos we put out. So okay, number one is skill. All right, let's move on to number two. Why? Why do you wanna quit your job? Hold on a second, now before you rush off and say, Anik, of course I wanna quit my job, I, you know, I wanna be free. Well, okay, but a lot of jobs right now are actually giving you tremendous amount of financial freedom. As a matter of fact, a lot of people are saying that entrepreneurship is not the right thing to do right now, but supporting entrepreneurs is the right thing to do. See, if you wanna quit your job, you better have a why that's way deeper than this fictitious idea that you have that you'll get more freedom and more money. Actually becoming an entrepreneur early on in your career as an entrepreneur, it's the exact opposite. I've always said the hardest boss in the world you can ever have is you. You're, if, if you're a good entrepreneur, you are gonna be a complete a-hole to yourself. I know I am. I'm harder on me than 10 bosses combined. So why do you want, you know, okay, yeah, so first of all, you're gonna work harder, by the way. All right, being an entrepreneur, you're gonna work harder. This whole dream of like, people think, oh my God, I'm gonna fly the world, I'm gonna work whenever I want. Well, not right away. All right, that takes, it takes some time, it takes years, it takes you building a team before you have that kind of freedom. So are you willing to double down on the hours you work and make less? That's right, people think, I wanna be an entrepreneur because I'm financially free. Like you, you're gonna to decide to quit your job and go start a business and money will just start falling from the trees for you. That's not how it works. So when you have a why, right? Like what, what's the deeper reason is there a problem you're trying to solve? Is there a challenge in the world that you wanna build value around? And it's not a good enough why to say, I wanna spend more time with my children. Well, guess what? Then don't become an entrepreneur because that's not the road to spending more time with your children for the most part. Not right away. It is eventually, but not right away. But when, for me, right, I, I have a deeper why and that is to change the way we as humans evolve in our educational system. I wanna bring the opportunity of entrepreneurship to people's doorsteps. I wanna teach them how they can make more money by monetizing their skills than by wasting it at college, burning it away, and then working in jobs that they don't love. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a job at all. Some people should absolutely have jobs. They should just have jobs that they love. So what's your why? Don't you even dare quit your job until you have a why that's so deep, so passionate about, that you're so passionate about that you could be dead broke working 100 hour weeks and yet still love your life. When you get there, okay, we can start talking about your job and quitting it. All right, number three, insurance policy. No, I'm not talking about calling your car insurance guy or your home insurance. I'm talking about, you got a bit of money in that bank account? Like what is gonna happen if you quit your job and nothing goes according to plan, which usually is, what entrepreneurship looks like, by the way. The one thing you can count on as an entrepreneur, okay, the one thing you can rely on is that you can't rely on anything. That's the one thing you can rely on. Things don't go according to plan. So let me ask you a question. What if you have a bad month, right? You don't sign that client. And this is what I love. People sign, people quit their jobs and go become an entrepreneur based off like, well, so-and-so said they would sign me. So-and-so said they would sign me. So-and-so said they would sign me. And then when it comes time for you to say, okay, sign me, give me money, guess what, they whoosh, ghost you vanish. 
So until you've got those checks in your hand, until you've got that money coming in part-time, you've got the income going, okay, if that's the case, then that's, that's, we're gonna talk about that in number four. But let's say you do cut, you know, and you go and you move on to a different a career, you start to build your business. What if you have one bad month? What if you make no money first month? What if you make like a little bit of money month two? What if month three doesn't go that well either? Month four, month five, month six, how many months before you are literally gonna be in a bad, bad, bad situation? like not able to pay for your house, not able to pay for food type of situation. In a great insurance policy, you would have a minimum six months worth of safety net, worth of income. So if you are earning currently, let's say you earn $5,000 a month, and that is your expenses, that covers your house, your car, your living expenses, your children, your food, and everything, it's 5,000 a month. Let's just say that's what you earn. You would need to have a minimum $30,000 set aside. Why? Because you could go into business, Month one doesn't go so well, month two doesn't go so well, month three doesn't go so well, and it's not looking like it's gonna uptrend. You still have three months left to go get yourself a job. So you don't risk your future and your family's future. Now, do you have to have six months worth? No, maybe you only need two months work. I don't know where you live. I don't know how rampant job opportunities are for you. For example, for me, I could get a job pretty easily. I got a lot of experience, I got a lot of skills, I got a lot of talents, I got a lot of background, I got a lot of connections, right? But what about you? You know, what are you currently doing? What is your insurance policy? How would you be able to make the bills? How would you be able to pay the bills if everything you currently think that is so rosy, that's gonna go so well, what if it doesn't? Because many times it doesn't. Be safe, make good decisions. So number three is your insurance policy. What are you gonna lean on if things don't go well? And number four is your exit strategy. Listen, okay, the last thing you wanna do at your job is throw a big tantrum, throw things up in the air and just storm out of the place. Recently, I'll tell you this, I recently had this happen. There was a particular person who I had helped out. I, uh, this person was in, was in a dire place in their life, they needed help, so I brought them into the company, I hired them because I wanted to help them out. Now, things weren't going that well, they maybe weren't that happy with the job and we weren't that happy with their performance and things were going along, but at least bills were being paid and I had, in my part, stepped up to help them out. Well, one day, they walk in, bright and early in the morning, say, I quit and just left. Didn't finish the day, didn't give a notice, just walked right out. Now let me ask you a question. How do you think I feel about that situation or that person at the moment? What if things were to hit the crap again with that person, would I still be standing in their corner to help them out? No, we call that burning bridges and that bridge has been burned. Don't burn bridges on your exit. If you are gonna exit, remember one thing, whether you love or hate your job, that job was there for you to help you pay the bills. It helped you survive and you owe some level of loyalty to it. As a minimum, you gotta give that two weeks notice, right? But beyond that, are you gonna go part-time first and start earning some income by moonlighting on weeknights and weekends so that you know before you even quit your job, you've replaced the income or you have more income? I would actually say you should be making at least double what you make at your job before you quit. That way, that's your insurance policy. Like if you make 5,000 a month at your job and you start to make 10,000 a month at your business, heck, you could lose half your business and still be making what you made at your job. So this is an exit strategy. You gotta sit down and really think through it, right? So what's your exit strategy? Come on, leave me a comment below right now. Tell me, how much money would you wanna have in your bank account before you felt like you were comfortable enough to take the risk of being an entrepreneur, to go out there on your own? How much do you think you would need in your safety net? Now, if you're young, you live at home with parents, guess what, congratulations, your safety net get, gets to be a lot smaller. This is why the older you get, the tougher it can become to become an entrepreneur because you have more responsibilities on you. So go ahead, leave me a comment right now. I read them all. Tell me, what exactly is your exit strategy? Right? What is your skill? What is your insurance policy? What is your why? Leave a comment below. Tell me all of these things. Click the little thumbs up icon in this video. Make sure you click subscribe so I can send you more and more of these videos every day to inspire you, to inform you, to educate you. And then we as a, as a community, We'll grow together as entrepreneurs, all right? This is Onyx Singal reminding you when life pushes you, stand straight, smile, and push it the heck back, and don't just go out and quit your job. Be smart about it, be strategic about it, make sure you always put your safety, your family's safety first. Entrepreneurship is about being safe and strategic, not risky. That's the worst thing out there being taught. It's not risky at all, okay? Leave me a comment below, click subscribe, click the thumbs up icon, and click the little bell icon so you get a message every time I submit a video to YouTube. This is Onyx Singal, talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to The Fighting Entrepreneur with your host, Onyx Singal.